Sometimes, as a miniature painter, I feel more like a kid coloring in the pages of a coloring book, because all we're doing really is putting paint on something somebody else created. So I thought, maybe it's time I look into creating something in 3D on my own. So today, we're going to look into Grinder. Blender. Blender. Not Grinder. Blender. Let's look into Blender. As always, if you're liking the content that we're putting out here at Pulsegate Games, please like, please subscribe, and drop a comment in the, in the channels. Let us know what we're doing well. Let us know what we're doing horrible and we'll do our best to fix it. So, like I said, like, subscribe, drop us a comment, let us know what you think. When I first got into 3D printing, every time I had a problem with something printing, I would go to the internet and I would try and find the reason that it was failing, the reason that the print wasn't working properly. And more often than once, I got sent to, well, you need to add the supports in this program and then re-import it and then print it with the supports from this other program. And I thought, it can't be that hard. It's pretty hard, bro! Right? I can't, I shouldn't have to take a 3D file, upload it to something else, then bring it back in and load it into my slicer program, slice it, like, it was too much for me. You know, but because of that process, I got to work a lot with programs like Mesh Mixer and Blender. And what these are are 3D programs, you know, 3D sculpting, molding programs where you take a 3D file and you go in and you can tweak it, you can alter it, you can change it. And a lot of these were for repairing it, you know, oh, there's holes in this model, whoever built it didn't, you know, finish attaching this to that. So you got to open it up here and yeah. Anyone who's 3D printed has probably run into some of this. But because I was running into that a lot, I got into Blender. I got into using that and messing around with it. And it was so much more fun than I thought it was going to be. Now, is there a steep learning curve? That's, that's like, it's practically impossible. It's not like EVE Online or anything like that. Uh, the learning curve for Blender is one of those that you have to learn the shortcuts, learn the shortcuts, learn the little, you know, tricks to doing this, that, and the other. And then it becomes a relatively easy program to use. So, so no, I don't think the learning curve is horrible, but it does take your time. Okay. And if you're like me and you're investing your time into writing and creating and painting and everything else and working full time, <laughs> you don't have a lot of time for that. And so, you know, take that as you will. But today I wanted to go over a few of the things that I learned from Blender and a few of the models that I created myself. So first off, what is Blender? Blender is an open source um, 3D creation tool. Okay, it is free to download. It's open to everyone. Um, it is a little resource intensive, like any 3D programming, you know, so your computer, it's gonna be one of those things that Maybe it won't handle it too well, but there's a lot of tricks and things like that that you can do inside of it that even, you know, low end laptops and computers can get you by, can do certain things you want to do with it. Um, but it's, it's a tool that anyone can use to do a lot of different things. You can create 3D objects, you can animate 3D objects. I mean, you can create full on, you know, CG scenes and things like that that you've seen. Um, you can also do 2D animation as well. And so it's a, it's a tool that can be used in a lot of different ways. And there are hundreds of YouTube tutorials. Um, one of the people that I have followed that I feel like does an excellent job of teaching new people is Dan Sculpts. And I'll put a link to his YouTube below. I just think he's he does a really good job of breaking it down and making it really easy. Um, and he follows my style of creating in Blender. And what I mean by that is he sculpts. Ah, yes, the sculptor. So in Blender, you can, you can in any 3D program, you can build your 3D objects in different ways. Um, 
The first one is sculpting, where it's basically like they give you a three-dimensional sphere or cube or something like that. And you, with your mouse or your pen, whatever you have, uh, pull it around, indent it. You get, to, you get to literally work it like you're working a ball of clay. You know, and so you can push in indents for eyes or pull them out and do things like that. And it's really cool. There are some challenges to doing it that way, but for me, it was the easiest thing to do. Um, I, by no means, I can't draw, but for some strange reason, I can sculpt. And I sculpt relatively well. well I like to toot my own horn, but... Uh... Um, I haven't found my said style yet but I'm working towards that. Um, and if you've seen some of my other videos, you have seen some of the things that I've put together just kind of as mock-ups for the game that I'm making. But sculpting is fun. I love sculpting. It's, it's honestly like, you know, you're working with a piece of clay. Uh, the other way to do it is a more technical side of doing things where you're dealing with um, grids and axes and you know points and different things like that and you have to connect those points and move them and I mean it's almost like creating something 3d using two-dimensional objects and so I know that's kind of strange but if you've ever seen somebody you know using like paper glue the edges of those paper together and they make you know a mask or something out of paper using grids and things like that that's the other way that you can create in blender and most people that I've seen do a combination of the two. It's easier to blend out the body or to sculpt out the body and then to add clothes, you just put a thin layer over the top of it using these the grids and things like that and you can create them into clothes. And like I said, this program is not just meant for creating miniatures. It's meant for doing a lot of things. And so you can animate your clothes, you can animate your characters, you can do all sorts of stuff. But that's one of the cool things about it too is that you can attach a skeleton to something. So if you make your figure, you know, and they're just in their normal arms out uh, form that you've made them in, uh, you can attach a skeleton to that. The, the skeletons. So attaching the skeleton to that 3D model allows you to move it around and position it in different stances. You know, whenever you see a, a model, a 3D model, a Space Marine or a Patreon, and it's, you know, it's got multiple stances, uh, sometimes you might think that that's just like a lot of extra work, but once you've attached a skeleton to it, it's not that bad. You know, you can have it saluting, you can have it on one knee, you can have it jumping, you can change the stances all you want, and then you just gotta make sure that the base, whatever it is, uh, matches that stance. So overall, I mean, Blender is an awesome tool. It is something that I suggest everyone look into, even if you're only getting into it to repair things, you know, because repairing an STL file, super easy. Uh, there's plenty of tutorials on how to do that. Um, it's just a great program to get to know a little better. And once you know it a little bit, you can alter it. And I can't even begin to tell you how many people are out there making money on models that all they've done is pull up a model, go into it, alter it a little bit, and sell it. An example of this, Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur! Right? Bulbasaur the Pokemon. He uh, has some sort of like leaf pod on his back. Somebody went in, took a Bulbasaur model, got rid of the leaf pod, made a pumpkin, a jack-o'-lantern to be precise, and put that on his back, and then they started selling them. Started selling them on Etsy, started selling them on wherever you sell 3D prints, and sold thousands of them to the point where they were sold out. They couldn't make enough, you know, and that is a relatively easy thing to do. So get out there, try it out. There are tons of shortcuts, tons of little things that you need to learn to make Blender work. To help you with that, in case it's something you want to do, I have made this. And what this is, is just a list of the shortcuts that I found super helpful. There are hundreds of shortcuts in this program, but these are the ones that, for me, were huge and made a big difference in making you know, my sandbags and making my first character. You know, I've also gone through and I've made a gas station and things like that, that, you know, terrain stuff. And like I said, there's two styles to sculpting or to modeling 
in Blender. You have to decide uh, which one you like to do, what preferred method you have. For me, I do a little bit of both. Like I said, bodies, characters, things like that. I think they're a lot easier to sculpt. Okay, I, I even sculpt clothing. I think clothing is relatively easy to sculpt. Okay, but when it comes to building, object mode. You got to go into object mode because you're doing all these square corners and things like that. It allows you to divide them up into, you know, bricks and things like that. So in my mind, object mode is definitely for things that are tools, you know, like a building or sandbags or a sword or an axe. I feel like they're easier to make in object mode than they are in sculpting mode. And I guess that's because the one weakness to sculpting is creating hard edges, you know, creating those sharp corners that you want on something. So if you're going to do a sword, it's difficult to get that point and to make it nice and straight. Um, type in hard surface modeling for Blender and you'll see what I mean. There are hundreds of videos on how to do hard surfaces just because in sculpting it is, it's kind of difficult to do. But like I said, those videos make it possible. And so you can make anything. You can sculpt anything you want. I just think some things are easier done in object mode. So try it. Tell me what you think. Show me the models that you have made and show me the ones that you've tweaked. I would love to see those. Um, there are tons of them on Thingiverse. All you have to do is go on there. I mean, type in The Rock to Thingiverse and you'll see The Rock Crocs. You'll see The Rock to Puss. You'll see a million different things that are just somebody took The Rock's head and put it on some other object. And they do those things in Blender and other 3D programs. So share with us your favorites. I would love to see... I want to say photoshops but your favorite blender jobs uh, of different models that have been made and let us know in the comments what they are blender is just another tool to help you in creating your world so i hope you use it and i mean literally it can be used to create worlds right share with us how you used it and how it helped you and you know, I'll keep chugging away at making my terrain and making my models. And hopefully one day I will have a game fleshed out that I can share with all of you. Until then, keep building your world. And as always, don't spend so much time building it that you forget to spend a little time in it. Until next time.